an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone? The Great Depression. In what way? The tariff bill. Does the author's tariff act lies? Anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? Ah, the familiar echoes of soulless classrooms, where time seems to crawl like a snail on a marathon. Rows and rows of desks stands like obedient soldiers, and textbooks, worn with age, gather dust in the corners. And then there's the professor, a master magician capable of making even the most captivating topics as riveting as watching paint dry. We've all been there, haven't we? Sitting in those dimly lit chambers, our minds wandering like lost travelers in the abyss of boredom. The once vibrant walls, now adorned with faded patterns and equations that refuse to speak to our souls. That, my friends, is the haunting reality of our stagnant education space. It's hard to fathom that the essence of learning remains almost unchanged since the inception of institutions such as Oxford and Cambridge, which emerged over a thousand years ago. Well, that goes on to say that there has been no innovation in education for over a thousand years. Back then, professors would gather students and with a piece of chalk, they would breathe life into knowledge on a simple blackboard. And now here we are in an era where technology has reached unparalleled heights. Yet education seems trapped in a time capsule. The chalkboard has been replaced by whiteboards and more recently smart boards and PowerPoint presentations. But have we truly harnessed the boundless potential that today's technology offers? For most of us, studying stands as a concoction of monotonous, repetitive and boring activities nice. that we must endure to attain a certain outcome, which may vary from passing an exam, getting your desired college or even getting a job. As a result, the process of learning, of, of associating credibility to the knowledge that studying entails becomes futile and meaningless. Often when we fail to deliver up to these outcomes, we are told that we are not good enough, we are not worthwhile and it's all our fault for being so incompetent. And so we continue to strive for higher ordeals and fail and fail again and again and again and again and again. Hey, maybe it was your fault after all. Maybe you're just not good enough. And here I am, sitting in a room filled with self-doubt, angst, agony and self-pity. Oh, why am I not smart enough? Why don't I have a higher IQ? Why am I not hard-working? Why am I... While I was completely immersed in a video game, effortlessly making the right decisions, having perfected all my mechanical skills, after spending countless nights practicing and watching game strategy videos on YouTube, my dedication felt effortless. Strangely enough, even after investing over a thousand hours in game, the desire to grind the game persisted. I knew I'd come back to play the game again the next day, and the next, and the next. Or remember when a much anticipated TV show comes up and you spend hours binge watching without feeling an ounce of boredom. If only education was as immersive, I would have grinded. Oh, come on now, you're just looking for excuses. Education isn't supposed to be enjoyable. It's all about discipline and hard work, just like you are all about failure. But for once, what if you weren't the problem all along? Imagine this, you stepping into a classroom where interactive virtual simulations replay static illustrations, where VFX, motion graphics, cinematic video editing and storytelling replaces the whiteboards and PPTs, where every equation has in itself a story to tell and a history to unfold, where questions aren't mere calculations but, but portal to another dimension, 
the exploration of universe revealed by science we are about to begin a journey that will take us from the infinitesimal to the infinite from the dawn of time to the distant future we will explore galaxies and suns and black holes to the interaction between the smallest particles a tale where calculus isn't a topic but a battle of cosmic proportions where thermodynamics is a reflection of a century long struggle to modernization later to be known as industrial revolution where biomolecules isn't some weird drawings on the board but the embodiment of a morphine addict chemist who would accidentally mix cocaine with wine and develop a cheap vin mariani knockoff drink later to form a conglomerate that we know as coca cola it's time to get going on a story about us a saga of how wandering bands of hunters and gatherers found their way to the stars one adventure with many heroes but who am i back in 2017 a young kid from new delhi who spent most of his time playing football or grinding counter strike global offensive suddenly felt intrigued by the fact that a machine could solve the most complicated equations and yet fail to identify a, a cat which even an infant could easily recognize armed with nothing thus began his quest to understand the depths of ai and machine learning little did he know what was about to happen next is saal jaiye mai pair hue 11 lakh se zyada log aur id mein general seats hain 4886 success rate 0.442% His desire to become a magician in AI and ML soon subsided when he was forcibly enrolled in a JE coaching institute in 2018. Soon though, he realized that it wasn't so bad after all. Although the curriculum was non-intuitive and problem-solving oriented, the JE hype was real and he sought to take upon this challenge. Ambitious, hard-working, but arrogant as he was, he grinded relentlessly. In 2021 I finally gave the JEE exam and it was devastating. I couldn't get my desired college. What went wrong? Was I mugging up everything? Did I get any kind of wrong guidance or was I just not good enough? Well, whatever the reason may be, I took a drop year. For me, it wasn't just about a college. It was about my mental fortitude and commitment to my goals. In the time that followed, I started to actually connect with the subjects. Rather than just caring about the mechanical approach to solve a problem, I started to play around and get an intuitive understanding. Consequently, after getting 99.9 percentile in JEE mains with all India rank 1072, I was promoted to the top batch of my coaching, and ultimately I got all India rank 1508. and got admitted into mechanical engineering at IIT Delhi In retrospect today perhaps the best time of my JEE journey was the day I couldn't clear the exam as it taught me to be passionate again However difficult the process may be is not a means to an end but a means to meaning in itself and I can bet you my cat that all of you will resonate to my story because your jay journey there will be days that turn gray for no conceivable reason yes there will be months that you will feel horrible and not wanting to do anything yes there will be external factors that you have no control on whatsoever making you sad or complacent all the time but i will also bet you my cat that you're in for one hell of a ride and whenever you tell yourself that oh i'm too late to start my journey now or i am constantly scoring low in my mock test even after working very hard oh i do not have sufficient resources a conducive environment my parents don't believe in me my teachers demotivate me may i humbly remind you that whoever the greats are that you respect Obviously they had the same doubts and they pushed through they were intensely devoted to something while feeling lost all the time we forget that van gogh was 27 before he even bothered to paint and darwin told us i was considered by all my masters and my father a very ordinary boy rather below the common standards of intellect 
or that Leonhard Euler was completely blind for the last two decades of his life, yet he published more than half of his works during this period, or Galileo Galilei was ridiculed for claiming that Earth revolved around the Sun by the Catholic Church, which ultimately got him killed. The greats didn't know they were greats, they were mortals who refused to bow to cynicism. And to remind ourselves of that, all we gotta do is look back in awe and inspiration. Almost a century before, and this is Sergei Karolov. In 1933, he designed the first liquid fuel rocket to take off in the USSR. He was rewarded for his efforts, with imprisonment and a stay in the Gulag. By some miracle, he was released and went on to mastermind the first satellites in space, the first dog, and of course, the flight of Yuri Gagarin, who on 12th of April 1961 became the first of the Homo sapiens to leave the Earth, orbiting our planet for 108 minutes in Vostok 1. Karolov would die five years later, probably thanks to the injuries sustained in the Gulag. The Soviet space program was extremely secretive, and he was largely unknown in his lifetime. As history marches on, one day our period will blur into the countless others. Behind and ahead, we are not special. But some events will stand out. This will stand out. It was the first time we ever touched the heavens, and it was in large part brought to us by a man grossly mistreated in his lifetime, and largely still untalked of today outside science and engineering circles. There is currently a portrait of him in the service module of the International Space Station above us right now. And if by some miracle our species emerges from its current adolescence, there is every chance Sergei Karolov's portrait will one day accompany astronauts to corners of heavens Karolov couldn't have imagined, even in his wildest dreams. Using a totally different approach of learning, this channel will assist you in your journey through JEE. I will guide you through quality problem solving, reinforcement of theory with concrete conceptual clarity, from practical exam tips like time management and option elimination, to drawing constant motivation and inspiration from the topics. Come join me as we unravel in some of the deepest conversations some of the greatest minds to ever exist had one equation at a time.